Hello, my people. Welcome back to my channel, Demonic Divine Flames. I'm Adara Bellamore, and today um, I'm going to discuss about Shiva. Now, I have been watching videos and reading about the Western world talking about Shiva. Now, many people uh, talk about, work with, um, and are devoted to uh, Shiva as Lord Shiva. Or the divine masculine principle. Many people are approaching Shiva's Tantra teachings and he is the one who has taught the world about yoga, Tantra, meditations and breathing exercises that we know it today. But who exactly or what exactly is Shiva that we need to know? When we walk uh, with demons, when we work on uh, enhancing our skills to be better able to connect to them, perceive them, see them, feel their presence, <clears throat> we try to invoke them, evoke them, whatever we do, we need to know that if we are working with these beings, it's important for us to know about Shiva. Now, why? Because we know that demons belong to the spectrum of divine darkness, as what we know as uh, darkness as a divinity. Now, Shiva basically is that divine darkness himself. That divine darkness which is actually nothing but still everything. This divine darkness, this nothingness holds within itself everything. For example, you can just take a simple example that if you have an empty bottle, you, you would be able to fill it. But if a bottle is filled to the brim, can you fill it with more water? No, you can't. Because there is no space. There is no space. It's like that. We are like limited vessels trying to hold a super consciousness, trying to define and give forms to a super consciousness that is basically beyond our imagination, understanding or limited concepts. That is what Shiva is. This divine darkness that holds within itself all the creation, everything that we know of and everything that we don't know or we can't imagine uh, can exist. He's the vessel that holds the existence. And you cannot hold something just like I gave the example of the bottle. This also holds true when you're learning with demons or you're walking any other spiritual path, if you already have judgments in your mind or preconceived notions and ideas that you've learned over the years that, you know, demons are bad or uh, Shiva is uh, nothing but he's just some ob obscure god who's doing nothing and these kind of preconceived ideas you have learned, then you you are already a bottle that's filled to the brim. You have You cannot take even one drop of water. So in order to learn, you have to reach the state of Shivahood. You have to become Shiva yourself. And you know why I'm coming today on a Tuesday with this video? We know those who work with demons and those who specifically work with Belial, that Tuesday happens to be one of the days of Belial. Tuesday and Sunday. Even though you can invoke and evoke any demon on any given day, it's it's not that important. It's just important when you're just starting up. Uh, with time, when you form a solid bond, then you can just invoke or commune with them any 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 time. 
day, night. It really doesn't matter where you're, whether you're wearing ritual robes or you're doing some special kind of, um, uh, you know, rituals with some tools and all. Nothing matters. You are a tool in itself. So for learning, you have to be like Shiva. You have to be nothing. You have to be in a state of being calm and receptive. You have to be empty. You have to be the darkness. And this darkness is peaceful. This silence, it's peaceful. It doesn't have any clutter. So this is Shiva originally, the super consciousness. Now, as time passed, civilization started taking shape. People started defining their boundaries, their territories, their cultures, languages came, all of the different com complexities started, uh, you know, growing up, started coming into being. It is then that people needed a form, something solid to focus on, to make uh, that, that something into uh, an object of worship, an object of devotion. That is when Shiva came into being as the Divine Masculine or as Lord Shiva, as we know him now. And that is also not wrong. Because the source contains within itself all different forms. And this form of Shiva is the form of the Lord of Nature, the Lord of the Wild. It is also much closer to the Celtic god Kurnianos. Find out about Kurnianos. Or the horned god. So the original Shiva was the horned god. The first ever personification of a divine masculine god. When Shiva or the supreme consciousness which is silent, which is in a state of nothingness, which is in a state of uh, eternal peace, when it wants to express itself, then it wields its energy, its power, which is Shakti. Shakti is energy, the energy of creation. She's the one who creates the worlds, the world of forms. She is Maya, Mahamaya, the great goddess. She's inseparable, inseparable from Shiva. That is why we say that, you know, the union of Shiva and Shakti or the union of the divine masculine and the divine feminine is something sacred, is something divine. It's not something to look down upon. It's not sin. Basically, that's the concept or the point of sacred uh, sexuality, which Shiva taught the world. Shiva is the supreme yogi. He taught all these techniques, which we know today as meditations, breathing exercises, yoga, which is world famous now. These are so ancient, thousands and thousands of years ago, that we don't even know exactly that when it all began. But we know that Shiva is the center of all of this. He taught all of this. So in order to do any spiritual practice, you have to first enter the state of being Shiva so that you can hold this knowledge without any judgments, without opinions, without you know, all that learned clutter that you have learned over the years. Only when you are Shiva, you can hold Shakti and you can create, you can manifest your life. Now, this divine darkness that Shiva is also makes him 
the one from whom uh, all the demons come. And all the beings of light also come. Because he is the darkness that eliminates your soul. That eliminates you. When you fall into this darkness, when you go deep within yourself, when you face yourself, when you face your challenges, your weaknesses, your shadow self, only then you come out into the light as the light bearer. That is why Shiva is also sometimes in the western left-hand path, especially uh, uh, with people who work with demons, they call Shiva as Lucifer. But Lucifer is an expression of Shiva, not Shiva himself. Shiva is like the center. Whether we are talking about light beings, whether we are talking about angels, or we are talking about demons, or we are talking about gods and goddesses, he's the center. They all different forms, all different spirits, call them god goddesses or any other uh, spirit from any other race, they all emanate from Shiva. And all these, uh, you know, most known demons and even those which are not that known but they are working in the background and they can be contacted they dwell within Shiva or are expressions of Shiva Lucifer, Belial, Asmodei and many others they all are expressions of Shiva expressions of the divine darkness they hold Shiva's essence within themselves. So in, in this regard, Shiva plays the role of the adversary or the destroyer. The destroyer of all the ills that you hold to be true, that you think are true, but they are detrimental to your spiritual growth and your ascension and to your soul illumination. Belial wanted me to talk about Shiva since some time and I was not able to make a video on Shiva because I said it's a vast topic like what exactly do I talk about Shiva? There is a lot and uh, people all around the world they're talking about Shiva sometimes as Lord Shiva, sometimes as consciousness, sometimes as his idol but it's really hard to point out like this and say okay this is Shiva. Because Shiva is the supreme consciousness that dwells in everything, but at the same time, he is outside everything or and beyond everything. It's that spark of life. It's that spark of light. And it's that divine darkness. It would be better if you commune with Shiva within yourself and open yourself to Shiva's energy that you will be able to understand what exactly he is or what, what exactly Shiva is. It's very hard to define in certain words. And when you work with these demons, always know that it would be better for you if you're in a Shiva, Shiva state or if you have entered Shiva hood in order to deal with the uh, challenges that these adversaries bring on the table. Because when you are empty, empty means when your vessel, like uh, take for example, there is a bottle, okay? And that bottle is filled to the brim with water. And you want to pour some more water. What happens? The water spills. So the bottle cannot hold anymore because it's filled with water. Just like that, if you're filled in your head with all kinds of judgments, preconceived ideas, then you're not teachable. You're not open to learning. You cannot learn. You cannot be Shiva. You have to be Shiva. You have to be that nothingness that silence that stillness in order to take all these teachings within yourself to eliminate your soul 
So you have to go beyond limitations. And that is why he shared with the world these all ancient teachings of yoga, breathing exercises, different tantric uh, you know, techniques to reach that state of Shivahood. So Lord Shiva is a personification that has been given to him by people and Shiva as a, a spiritual, what do you call it? Shiva as a spiritual uh, truth is simply the super consciousness that is everywhere but still it cannot be seen or perceived with, by the five senses it's the same you know when you're working with spirits be it anyone take the name of any demon any angel you cannot see them you cannot perceive them through the five senses unless you go you know you have practiced a lot on yourself you've done a lot of self work and you have reached that state of being Shiva where you're open you're fluid, you're flowing, and you're in a state of nothingness. It's the same. You cannot perceive Shiva. You cannot see Shiva. You cannot taste or breathe Shiva. But he's everywhere and in every little thing. That spark. That's Shiva. Shiva. All for now, and I'll be bringing you more videos on the tantric uh, aspect of Shiva and even Lucifer as Shiva and uh, what Bilial has uh, taught me about Shiva and about his connection to Shiva. So stay tuned for more. Keep uh, motivating me by hitting a like, share and subscribe to my channel. And I want to thank all my subscribers who have just joined. Thank you so much. It means so much. Uh, to have you in the Demonic Divine family. You are a tribe. And uh, I also would like to extend my uh, thanks and my gratefulness uh, to all those uh, who have purchased readings from me, uh, who are uh, currently uh, taking the spiritual coaching services from me it really inspires me a lot when i work with each one of you each one of you have different energy signatures and um, i'm always open to learning and it's a two-way interaction uh, i enjoy uh, learning learning about you uh, and how better i can help you thank you so much